I'm Judge Andrew Napolitano, and this is Freedom Watch. Is there any gold in Fort Knox? Now, the question sounds like a joke, sort of like the, the one about who's buried in Grant's tomb. But suddenly, it's a very, very serious question that's become a part of the major national financial reform debate. After the financial turmoil of the past two years and the related decline in the value of the dollar, gold has become an even hotter commodity than usual. That's a reminder to hardcore free market advocates that a gold standard once was used to back our currency, making it harder for the government simply to print more and money willy-nilly to cover its bills. Not surprisingly, the Federal Reserve has been resistant to an audit of its money printing and money lending activities, even as the idea of an audit has become more popular on both sides of the aisle and in both houses of Congress. More surprisingly, though, they've also been resistant to a simple audit of their gold supplies at Fort Knox and in the New York Fed's vaults. Why? Is there less gold there than there is supposed to be? Has the United States government sold off more of its gold since going off the gold standard than we were led to believe. Joining me now to talk about all of this is the chair of the Mises Institute and a champion of free markets and sound money, Lou Rockwell. Lou, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Judge, great to be with you. Is there any gold left in Fort Knox? Well, I think we'd like to find out. Uh, Ron Paul talks about this, why there ought to be an audit. There has not been an audit since the 1950s. And we know that a vast amount of gold flowed out of the United States in the late 1960s and early 1970s under LBJ and Nixon because of all the inflation right at the end of the Bretton Woods system. So how much gold is there? Uh, we, we don't know. So Ron Paul says, how about an audit of the, Fed, of the, right. gold, the gold stock? What yep. have they got? They, but they resist. Why do they resist? As you said, that's the question. Right. Well, one could only speculate as to why they resist. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Congressman Paul's original piece of legislation, which we all know uh, by its nomenclature, H.R. Uh, 1207, which was passed by the House of Representatives, would have provided for such an audit. But once it got watered down in the Senate and the watered down version is now on its way back to the House, it doesn't include, it, it, it doesn't include that audit at all. It's basically reduced to just an audit of the banks that the Fed bailed out, not under TARP, but on the, under the stimulus programs that preceded and succeeded uh, TARP. So without some new legislation, we won't know if there's any gold left in Fort Knox or if there is, who owns it? Well, and these are important issues. And it's, I, I must say, I tend to be a skeptic when it comes to the government in every sense. I tend to assume that everything they say is a lie. Now, everything they say is not a lie, but most of what they say is a lie. So they need to, seems to me they need to prove to us need to let an independent assayers go in there, count the gold, and test some of the bars to see, are they gold? Same with the uh, vaults of the New York Fed. Who owns the gold in the vaults of the New York Fed? Is it foreign governments? Is it the IMF? Is it the U.S. government? Is it the Fed itself? They, they stonewall on this as well. And I think we have the right, as Ron Paul certainly does, to know what the heck is the real story. In 1933, in an executive order, uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, on his own, made it illegal for private persons to own gold. About two weeks later, the Congress, uh, kowtowing, enacted legislation that uh, tracked the executive order and said, okay, the president's already done this. We will now make it really illegal for Americans uh, to own gold. Uh, eventually, that was changed. In 1973, President Nixon took us off the gold standard. Question. I want you to speculate, Lou. I want you to dream a little bit. What would life be like today had FDR and the Congress not made it illegal to own gold and had President Nixon not taken us off the gold standard? Well, Judge, if we were still on a gold standard, and this is going to sound a little bit like science fiction, but this was the case all throughout American history and, indeed, all throughout the history of the world under a gold standard, your, your money, your savings becomes more valuable each year. Even if you don't get a raise, your paycheck buys more. The savings that a young person puts away in their 20s when they want to spend them in their 70s, buy more. This is the way a free market society operates because they're not expanding the money supply, but the goods and services are being expanded, so money becomes more valuable. This is the way it's supposed to be. It requires vast efforts by the government, by the Federal Reserve, to actually turn this around and make our money uh, depreciate and make its value diminish and even disappear. And uh, so... Also, by the way, we'd have far more freedom because a gold standard strictly restricts the government's 
ability to do a lot of the crazy unconstitutional stuff they do today. So they can only do it when they can print up the money. So uh, a Democrat and a Democratic Congress, uh, FDR and the Congress in 1933, and a Republican president on his own have succeeded in taking away freedom, opportunity, prosperity, and property for what? So that the government can print money to pay its bills. And these, by the way, you know, as, as you pointed out, these are acts by these two presidents that are the acts of a dictator. These are not, not anything the founding fathers envisioned. The president being able to confiscate everybody's money or change the monetary system of the whole country just by signing a piece of paper and issuing it like he's Caesar Augustus. Lou Rockwell, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. You can catch today's show on foxnews.com slash Freedom Watch and on Sirius 145, XM 168, or online at foxnewstalk.com at 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. From New York, defending freedom. Until the next time, stay free, America.